say that. Vodka or gasoline? Hi guys, good morning. We're getting some brunch right now and it feels like we've been getting a lot of these bougie brunches. I have a dragon fruit smoothie bowl. Matt got nasi goreng. Um, we got some sweet potato fries with avocado sauce. It's so inexpensive. We're staying in your budget every day and we get to eat these delicious meals in the most aesthetic cafes. And we're having a great time. So let's do a little taste test. That's so fresh and so good. Look how vibrant this dragon fruit is. It's good. Um, so yeah, we're gonna enjoy our food and I'm definitely gonna miss Changyu. We had the county fair. I told you this place is super Americanized. I was on my phone sitting in bed and Matt was standing up walking around and I said that the bed was shaking. And he said, no, it's not, you're crazy or something. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the walls start shaking and the door to our room is glass, so it's rattling. Um, and we run outside and apparently there was a 5.5 magnitude earthquake. Yeah, so that's pretty crazy. I have never experienced an earthquake in my life, uh, being from Florida. But apparently this is a normal thing because we went outside and the surfer staying in the room next to us said, oh, that's so sick, like great. So maybe it's good for surf, I don't know. Then we walked outside because we're like, what's going on? And everyone was just walking to the beach with their boards and businesses were going on as usual. So apparently it's a common occurrence and we're the crazy ones for thinking it's crazy. All right guys, we thought we'd take this time to kind of chat and explain how we decided to become full-time travelers. I know we had a few friends asking, how did we do this? How did we decide to become full-time travelers? And there's a few points I guess we can talk about. So we've had the travel bug for a while. We always knew we wanted to do international travel for an extended period ever since we studied abroad in Germany for a semester in our undergraduate careers. Yeah, so ever since uh, we got back from studying abroad, we've been trying to figure out how we could kind of do it again um, without school, with less school. At least for Matt, I do want to go back to school. And so this is just a good opportunity before I go on to higher education to go ahead and travel, especially while we're so young and still developing and figuring out who we are. I want to be able to understand many different cultures and peoples and places. So once we decided we wanted to do full-time travel for a year, we thought that this is the best time in our life. We're 23 years old and we don't have a mortgage, we don't have children, we really don't have anything tying us down, so we thought this is the perfect opportunity to take advantage of. So that's pretty much our inspiration, I guess. Yeah. And it was one morning, we were just on our morning walk and we thought, should we do full-time travel? And it was just a crazy idea. We were like, no, we can't do that. That's expensive. That's a lot of time. Our families will freak out. And then we just sat on it. And I mean, obviously here we are, but it took about a year of planning ahead of time. So the first thing we really started to think about is where are we going to travel? So we decided to pick the most iconic backpacking travel locations for young people. So these are the budget friendly, cheap countries to travel to. Right now we're in Southeast Asia, which is really friendly to our budget. <laughs> for real, it really is. And then we wanted to pick warmer climates or visit those climates in the warmer seasons because we're only carrying two bags. So we don't want to have to pack a bunch of winter clothes. Plus we're Floridians and we just thrive better in the heat. As far as like an itinerary for like the entire year, um, we have like a Excel sheet kind of planned out roughly uh, where we want to go in the future. So we're not really sure if we want to post that information yet because we're not really sure if that's the exact route that we're going to take. Um, so we have basically, you know, countries that we're going to go to as long as their borders are still open, pending world conflicts, um, coronavirus outbreaks, monkeypox outbreaks, other type of outbreaks, <laughs> Zika virus outbreaks. Dengue, fever, okay. Japanese encephalitis. So we both graduated from college in May of 2021 and right after that we went straight into the working force. So working full time we were able to save up for our year of travel. And then we also have credits, flight points, and other things like that from our credit cards. 
and Matt can make a more detailed credit card travel hacking video later on. But I was pretty surprised to know that we'd be spending less this year while traveling than we would just in our normal lives at home, in our apartment, eating out in America, you know. And like we said earlier, we moved out of our apartment and that we were just renting that apartment. So our lease ended, we packed up everything and we were out of there and we both sold our cars and some other bigger items that we just didn't want to hold on to. I think another thing that took a lot of research and planning was travel vaccines. So mm. we don't see a lot of content about this online. A lot of full-time travelers aren't talking about travel vaccines. But what we did is we went to our local county travel clinic and had a consultation where she talked about she talked with us about where we're going and what vaccines are recommended. So we ended up getting the yellow fever vaccine because we're traveling throughout Southeast Asia and later we're going to be in South America and uh, Southern Africa. So we got that one and then we also got the typhoid vaccine. Then we both updated our tetanus shots because those needed to be updated. And then of course we have both of our COVID vaccines and the booster shot. So we're good on that. I will say that all of these countries are requiring you to show your vaccination card for COVID. So if you're not vaccinated, that would make traveling a little bit more tricky, not impossible. You just have to go through their procedures of testing, quarantining. Yeah, which it. can take like a couple weeks. You know, for example, Thailand requires you to uh, quarantine for 10 days if you don't have your vaccine so that I mean that's that's pretty expensive and that's a lot of your time you know when you could be traveling around um, another question that a lot of our family members had was how are you going to communicate with us how are you going to contact us so we ended up finding this app called Aralo which we talked about a little bit so with Aralo it, it's pretty cool you just download eSIMs on your phone so whenever you get to a new country you can just purchase however many gigabytes you need and then bam you have service you get to keep the same phone number it's just a lot easier than getting you know physical sims with new phone numbers basically yeah and i wish we knew about this when we lived in germany because we just didn't have any data we just used wi-fi when we lived in germany and that was a really big hassle when we were walking yeah. around and we couldn't use google maps and we didn't know where we were yeah that was rough <laughs> so i think aerolo is just so easy and a really good solution for yep. data so like we said, we don't really have too much tying us down in our lives right now. The only obstacle to overcome was saying goodbye to our families and knowing that we wouldn't see them for months on end. Hello Hi, family. family. <laughs> but they're really excited for us. We're excited to be able to share travel stories, photos, videos. Um, most of this content is just you know, to be able to share with our friends and family what we're doing every single day. We are flying home for Christmas, so we'll be back in the States for Christmas. We'll be talking everyone's ear off about all of our stories in Southeast Asia. So yeah, basically that's it. We all have different priorities in life, and one of our main priorities is to travel and to experience the world and so that's what we're doing right now in our lives and we want to travel for the rest of our lives of course but while we're young and we have no responsibilities we just want to travel full-time especially since you can do it with not that much money so we're trying full-time travel living on the road living out of carry-on suitcases so if you have any questions about life and if you want any updates just let us know and we'd be happy to share in america we have the westin in indonesia they have the eastin I don't know if you guys can see that too good, but that is where we were yesterday. The edge of that cliff to the right. Which is Uluwatu. And now we're back in Changu. Right there. Hi guys, so as we were editing this vlog, I realized that I forgot to include a disclaimer to my grandma. So hi grandma, I'm so happy you're watching our vlogs and you're able to follow along on our travels. But you're gonna wanna go ahead and end the vlog here because you're not going to like what you're about to see. So I love you, thanks for watching, and see you in the next vlog. Okay guys, so when we were in Chenggu, we found this bar that gave out free tattoos every single Tuesday. So we got there early, checked it out, and we were able to get a slot to get a free tattoo. And so we just hung out there for a while, met some new Australian friends, ate some good food, there was live music, and then we both got tattoos at this bar in Chengdu. It was a lot of fun and definitely budget friendly to get a free tattoo. So we had a really good time and you'll see that in the next clips. And also this is from the future. So we're currently in Gili Air right now and our vlogs are about a week backlogged. But if you wanna see what we're doing in current time, then you can follow us on all our social media accounts, which are all linked below. All right, now watch us get some free tattoos in Chengdu.
Why did you do this? Mopeds riding by. <laughs> <laughs> At More least. mopeds. Moped number three. <laughs> Bali core. Um, Bali what? Core. I don't know. It's a Gen Z thing. Okay. Um, 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 um. Uh, ah, um. Uh, hold up. Um, um. I say um so much. Because we are not really sure if, oh my God, I can't talk without saying um. And I worked at uh, Angie, you ever heard of like Angie's List? Dude, who am I talking He's trying to? to pitch you right now. Yeah, so uh, you need some, you need a handyman. You need a, pl you need a plumber. You need your roof done. <laughs> I can sell you a roof. Stop. <laughs> oh, also guys, literally two people last night asked us if we were on our honeymoon. I don't know if it's because a lot of Americans don't travel all the way to Bali, so maybe they think it's like, oh, it's a leaf. Ah. I've been in China. <laughs> <laughs>